Hello, good afternoon. It is uh, 1206, and this is a meeting of the Conservation Commission's subcommittee on land use policy. And we have an agenda that we're going to cover today, uh, covering a block of policy matters. Um, first will be community gardens, and second will be um, basically all the general rules that we have not sent to the commission so far. So we have, I think, an hour and a half, and we'll hopefully we won't belabor any points and we'll move all the way through it and then decide to send it to the commission. Hi, Dave. We have with us Aaron Jock, staff of the town of Amherst, Dave Somak, uh, who's assistant town manager and director of conservation development and Bruce Stedman, Conservation Commissioner, and myself, Alex Hoare. I'd like to know if and when any member of the public comes up, and I can't see that, Aaron, so if you would keep me apprised, I'd like to know. Any public with us now? Okay. I like... I'll bend over backwards to uh, include the public, hear from the public, and um, so we'll we'll go for it. I would like to start with uh, community gardens, and I have I can share the version that Aaron sent to me. Um, if I can figure out how to share here, but uh, maybe we don't need to see it to get the conversation going. I. Um, I'm going to bring up a topic which I already talked to Dave about, and that is I would like to suggest that we sever the community garden from our policy document. And um, um, I don't want to go into the reasons, but we never get any reports. It is on conservation land, and if we go forward with it, I'm going to recommend to get a license. Um, and it would be simpler and easier, I think, if we just wrote something that acknowledged that it's something the Department of Conservation is doing on conservation land, and that we simply condition the policy that if it expands in its extent, that uh, they come back to the commission for approval of that. And I've talked with Dave about this general idea uh, last week, and um, he was generally in occurrence, in concurrence, and thought he might be helpful in drafting some language. So, Bruce, where where would you be on this issue? Um, I agree with it. Okay, and um, it would make life easier for everybody particularly town staff that does manage the gardens and they can have, they can just continue to do what they do. Let's just leave it at that. And Dave, are you okay with that? I, I think you're on, you're on mute. Me? No, I don't can see you him. hear me now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now? Yes. I'm yeah. just have a, limited time to wolf down my lunch. So I don't want you guys to watch me eating, but um, uh, yeah, I'm generally in agreement with that. Okay. So how about if we do this, I'll go to the community garden and I will me physically measure with a tape the extent of um, um, the garden that has a fence around it. Hold on, Bruce. Yeah. Well, well well, Alex, we can do all of that with the GIS. It's not oh. really necessary. We, Aaron can do that with the GIS. Well, it's perfectly easy to run a 100-foot tape along the fence and say it's this big. Well, she can do it in in, in okay. Okay. three minutes with the GIS. So I was trying to figure out some way to describe how big they are now and give them some leeway because there's it's not just the fence. They have a work area they got the parking lot, they've got the a work area around the fence. So I don't want to squeeze them in and be generous with the amount of land that is acknowledged. Um, right. I, I think Aaron and I can come up with that. I, I don't I don't feel the need, nor do I want to include the parking lot 
as part of their area because that parking lot is at either place, Amethyst Brook or Fort River Farm, not theirs. It's a public parking lot. And it, it's, you know, if people want to use the trails, they use the parking lot. So we could acknowledge that, you know, they will use parking there from time to time and ask us permission if they're having special events, something like that. Okay, so, um, oh, okay. I didn't think about those things. Bruce? Would it be helpful once, if this is a separate entity now, once it's in draft final form, would it be helpful to have a public session where the people who have plots could get a read at it and comment? I lost you when you said people who have plots. From there on, I didn't get it. Um, just that maybe we can send it out to them in draft and say, what do you think? This is going to be the policy going forward. Um, the town works with them. The organizations, you're talking about um, um, not Amethyst Brook, but the other one. Fort River Farm. Fort River Farm. Um, the town works with organizations. There's a whole community. And so they're distant from us, but they talk to the town. So I I don't feel the need to go to the people who are actually using the garden. I would think that would be up to the town. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Good. So we'll, we'll kind of break this off and... Um... Yeah, then then we can deal with it kind of as a sidebar separate and, and we'll we'll yeah. still work with you all. Yeah. Simple, easy, much easier than the alternative. Aaron. I was just gonna comment that, you know, part of the reason why this land use policy was developed was to integrate all of the these discrete policies that didn't that weren't combined together and it just concerns me because like I'm, I was hoping that this was going to be like a go to document that we would refer to. And so now if we're taking sections out of it, I just worry that, you know, what is our policy going to be? Where is it going to live? Like, how is it going to be integrated into the overall land use policy? So I don't know. I guess I'm just um, wanted to voice that it was a lot of work to combine everything together. And so taking it apart again is a little. Okay. I hear you. And. I understand, but we're not taking it all apart. We're just divorcing ourselves from community garden. And we're putting a um, a limit on what can be done before they come back to the commission. Because when I talk to Dave about this, it is on CONCOM land. And so they are subject to the Conservation Commission, but on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, reporting basis, it's just simpler and easier um to have the have the department handle it which which that would all be under dave and again for practical purposes i, I think i think we can we can work on this as a sidebar and it's not a big deal to integrate this back even in 2025 but we're under the deadline of trying to get all these things done into the commission by the end of this year you know, I, I, you know, I'm just feeling the crunch of the end of the year, as you all are, of getting these things done. So I think we stick with what we have in this document, and then we can work it further, Aaron, you and I, and report back to this group and or the full, the full um, commission in 25 before the, the season. But, but we're definitely not dismantling it. I think a lot of hard work went into this. And um I so, disagree. Yeah. I disagree, Dave. I want, I want to put a put language in the policy document that separates us from it from it, and send that language to the commission for its approval prior to the end of twenty twenty four. Well, you could put a caveat um, that it, you know, the commission may revisit this in twenty five. I'm just saying. I'm looking at the clock, saying we've just spent fifteen minutes on this. I'm done already. Yeah, I'm done. It's just like too much. So, so we're all in agreement. It's a matter of how to do it. So, mm -hmm. I think 
um, for purposes of the end of December, we could have a quiet statement in there. There would be a heading for community gardens and simply saying that this is being delegated to the Department of Conservation to, to set policy and manage, period. And But then we need some definition of what is the garden in Amethyst Brook and what is the garden, um, the other garden. Okay, well, and Aaron or, could or, do up a GIS map of that, no problem to put in the policy. Okay, so I'm glad we're in agreement. Let's move on. And we have, um, I can I can share, <clears throat> share, um, let's see here. Sorry that you're gonna see the top of my head for a minute. Can you see the draft 11.5? Hello? Yes. Can you see words? Yes. Okay. So this ought to be, this actually, there's a lot here, but it ought to go fairly quickly because we've been through it a number of times over the last year and a half. And I'm trying to figure out how to scroll down here. Here we go. <clears throat> so starting at the top, um, we have gone through uh, this this insert native land acknowledgement and I sent to Bruce some words that the university uses and he took on the challenge of, of seeing if he could whittle that down to something to go in here and so far. I, haven't, I have not made progress, but it's, it's, in, it's in progress. Great. So I've made progress, just not the end. Okay. So um, if there is some objection on the town's part of considering adding some native language acknowledgement here, do us a favor and tell us now so that Bruce doesn't waste his time. That doesn't mean it's been agreed to. It, it's just if it's a non-starter, tell us now. Uh, Aaron, feel free to chime in, but I I think we should spend the time to figure out what we want to say about okay. the Native American piece. I know there I'm, I know many groups have um, kind of stepped in it a little bit around this, so we're going to have to be very careful and get some advice. But yes, the the thing I mentioned was that there is an advisor that came to the Connecticut River Watershed Partnership meeting, and I have not yet connected with her, but, and yes, that, the thing you just said came up in that meeting too. So there is a person for me to talk to. Okay, so what I, what I, what I sent to um, Bruce was the land acknowledgement, which is a full page in the- Right, I have a copy of it, yep. I'm telling Dave. Uh, Aaron uh, it's a it's a full page in the brochures that are handed out at uh, Bowker Auditorium or the Fine Arts Center for any performance and we don't need to say everything they have said um because they go off of the fact that the university is on you know a land grant and money was used to purchase land and blah, 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 or Indian land was sold to pay for land grant colleges. We don't need to get into that. But there are words in here that might be useful to him. And so he'll use that and he'll use whatever other language he finds to come up with a draft, which is short, sweet, and to the point. And then that will, the process, as I see it, that will go through this group, that will go to the, once this group is happy with it, It'll go to the commission for commission um, vote. 
and all by the end of December. Okay, so I'm just going to start going down through this. Rachel has a number of comments which we need to address, and you all have known this document. So if there are points that need to come up, let's just bring them up and get through it. And we have how many pages? Five plus a, a little bit. And it should be should be easy. So I'm just going to say any anything to talk about under the native language acknowledgement and the title general rules. Okay, hearing none. Uh, Rachel has a comment here. Oh yes, Bruce. So with regard, I, I was unclear whether people could just go out there at night, which doesn't seem like we encourage that. But could there be a permit? They could get a permit to go to do the thing she described. Yeah. So I can't. I I've got the screen. I got to move that. Okay. Good. Rachel, everybody can see Rachel's comment. What about organized night hikes, stargazing, folks seeking exercise in the winter months before work or after work with headlamps? Um, I'm going to turn to Aaron and Dave. There's Dave. Aaron's got her hand up. Yep, go. Just wanted to say that that's kind of the process we've been doing. So the rules and regs would be just the standard. And then if there was a deviation from that, they'd need a land use permit. Okay, so the comment here is, yes, they would need a land use permit from the com. com. Okay. Right. Hmm. I'm going to type fast, so never mind spelling errors. Okay, we done with that? Okay, um, we've got this passive recreation there was a comment earlier by Michelle noticing, noting that it didn't include dog walking. And I, I think, did, I'm sorry, I didn't go through other versions to, to meld in comments. I might have to do that. But I think we put in on leash dog walking. Right there at number two. Yes. Oh, it's in there. Okay, good. Okay, good. Sorry. I should read first. Any comments on number three? Number four. Number five. I don't have anything until 13. Okay, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I want to come back to twelve, thirteen. Rachel, I, I agree with Rachel. Yeah, she was just, yeah, she was happy with that. Fourteen, Rachel was happy with that. I agreed with her. Okay, before we flip to the next page, I'd like to come back to camping. Uh, homeless people. We need to have a discussion regarding camping and what would happen if we had an encampment like in Northampton. How how would the town handle that? Would it permit it? Would it not permit it? Should we say something? Uh, I can put a comment here if you want to come back to it. Well, my view is that this is the policy and it's up to the town to enforce it or make an exception on, as they deem appropriate. Well, the last time we had something so so plain as this was when the person wanted to um, photograph people and folks said, it's the law, there's no nothing here saying we can waive it. So there would have to be, if they were going to waive it, there'd have to be something... Um, mentioned about waving. Okay. Dave, you got any quick oh, comments? 
I would stick with 11 and 12 the way they are um, and cross the bridge on encampments, it, you know, if and when we come to it. We right now, if there are people camping on conservation land, we move them off based on um, based on earlier policy. Um, so we do not allow fires. We do not allow camping of any kind, including uh, homeless encampments. So we have a very, you know, a very uh, patient and compassionate approach to people who are homeless, but we do eventually move them off the land. Um, we give them many hours or many days to do it. Uh, we meet with them. We we collect their belongings and and deliver them to a predetermined spot. Uh, we sign the area before we before we do any of that, and we have conversations with them. So it's worked pretty effectively up until now. You know, up up through now. So. So um, you have had you have had experience with homeless people camping on Concom land. Oh. Dozens of times. Oh. Dozens. Yeah, it happens many times a year. So just leave it alone and don't add language? I would not add language, nope. Let's move on. So we're on the next page. Um, there's a comment here about mountain bikes. And I think this is... Um, I, I agreed with your alternative. Okay. Now, why would you say organized events or camps? Uh, it's not camps as in homeless camping. It's like summer camp for kids. Uh, okay. Like if... Um, um, gotcha. Yeah, we have a situation. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, we have there had are, that situation. There are summer camps too, like um, Morse Hill up in Shootsbury that actually they have their camp centered in that location, but they load up bikes and take the kids for mountain bike excursions at certain locations. So mm -hmm. that might be an example where the camp isn't located on the property, but it's used for some, you know, gotcha. camp yeah. related activity. Yeah. Hitchcock ran camps out of Larch Hill for 45 years. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I put summer camps here. Yeah, that might be better. Summer okay. camps or after school figure camps. I to add to my own comment. Oh, here it is. Okay. I also agreed with your action item. Oh, my comment went in the wrong place. Um, I'll go back to that. Okay. Working with town staff suggest on which trails and somewhere will be allowed in advance of an action item to be to the commission for its review. I don't want to do that today. No, I agree with the idea, though. Yeah. I, I, I think this language at the top, it says mountain bikes and horseback riders use conservation land at their own risk. We agreed on that language. All trails are open. Um, I think I independently put that in to be clear because we haven't done the action item. Okay. And I think there was discussion that let's wait to see if there's a problem. And Dave talked about insurance. So anyway, any okay. comments? Moving on, 16. Do you, well, do you want Aaron to take a stab at at what trails we would suggest that horses and mountain biker, bikes not be allowed based sure. on wetlands and resource areas? Sure. Is, is that something you could take a stab at, Aaron, and we could talk talk about it and then we could e email it out to the group sure what is the timeline on doing that just because that would be a bit of a um a task to uh, do it run an analysis of that um i'd like 
to include it so we can conclude by the end of the calendar year. But if you need to do it after the, the new year, we just postpone it. Okay, I can <clears throat> I can try to prioritize it. I just lots going on, but I'll do my best. Yeah, your time. I understand your time. Um, um, just based on your email the other day about working on Fridays on something else, and um, I don't want to add to the list of things. You're pretty. You're more than busy now. Um, but. I don't know what trail should be open or closed and neither does Bruce or Michelle. So we're going to depend on you folks. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. So um, let's move on and we'll wait for you on that one. Number 16. Okay. Number 17 is dogs. And um can Dave answer the questions that Michelle, uh, that Rachel asked, or Aaron, one of them? Yeah, Rachel, you see Rachel's comment, Dave. Yes. Um, does the town have a land management plan or agreement with Natural Heritage to protect nesting turtles going forward? Who is responsible for enforcing? Um, Aaron, help me out. Yeah, I mean we we have. We have a land, we pr proposed a land management plan to natural heritage. Um, it was more of an ecological restoration plan. Um, yeah, there, there is, there is um, as part of the conservation management plan an expectation that, that there would be keeping, keeping dogs out of particularly the restoration area, which is, north of the river and we had originally proposed split rail fencing to try to um, prevent public access to those locations. I think the problem became we didn't have a funding source for the split rail fencing so they're on the approved order of conditions the plan associated with that but um, we just need to to fund that somehow. And we would emphasize, as we do in all areas, that dogs must be on leash. It is not an off-leash area. Yeah, so uh, I reply to Aaron, I mean, to Rachel here, yes. And then to, does the town have a plan? Yes, the town has a plan. And then who's responsible for enforcing? Um, that's, that's... Department you could of just yeah, you could just say department or conservation department, because not all the land will be under conservation commission control. So, parenthetically, I did talk with Rachel about the question of why Hickory Ridge is not conservation land, and just emphasized to her that the answer is yet, <laughs> as Erin described to me. So she's fine about. Eventually, some of it, all of, uh, much of it will be, but it uh, is yet to come. Well, we're never going to we're never going to be responsible for the land with the solar. So, okay, um, we've been through dogs. I'm not sure that we need to spend any more time on dogs. And we went through it with Rachel and with the Michelle, so uh, her comments are are in here. Number eighteen, animal control officer. I don't know. This was part of dogs. It was not. Um, it's not a policy. It was supposed to be part of dogs. So. Um, um, Make it F in the list above. Motorized motorized watercraft or prohibited buffers pond. We've done that. Nineteen. Twenty. Three. 
Remind me again on, on 18, why did we not list the other ponds that are under conservation commission control? You know, for instance. Might have just been an oversight. I don't Plumbrook, I recall Plumbrook? anything intentional. Why would we not include Plumbrook Pond, Owens Pond, Cider Mill Pond? Is that it, Aaron? So Plumbrook Plumbrook is on there. Um, I know there's there's Gold Pond. 19. Uh, Dave, I oh. I think I remember somebody saying there's no access for motorboats on the other ones, whereas somebody might come up to uh, the North Beach and launch a boat. That'd be tough. But I think somebody said there's no boat ramp. Yeah, I mean, you certainly could put a boat with a trolling motor in at any of these ponds. Is that something we want or not? That's a motorized watercraft. Okay. Um, Just a thought. You could easily do it. Um, yeah, Alex, I agree with what you're doing. Just add them in. It can't hurt. There's one missing from this list. I've got Owens Pond. Cider Hop Mill Pond. I don't know why we list Hop Brook and not other brooks. I would get rid of Hop Brook. Cider what? Cider Mill Pond. Plumbrook Pond. And I'm not sure why Hop Brook is in there at all. Plumbrook Pond. Hop Brook. Um, um... Well, I I I actually added Hop Brook because based on my visit there with you, I saw no reason why somebody couldn't put in a a um, a kayak, a canoe, or a stand up paddleboard in Hop Brook. I'm mixing. I mean that. That's a it's nice down like the Casey Trail. I think he's talking about. Yeah, where you and I went to visit at the the Beaver Dam, Beaver Dam there. Yeah, but I'm saying number 18 is about what's prohibited, so. I'm going to take Hopbrook out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I see 19. Is there anywhere where um, motorized watercrafts are allowed? Could we just no. say motorized watercrafts are prohibited and leave it at that? Owens Pond, is that the pond uh, on Wentworth Farm? Yes. Owens, yes. Okay. It, at some level, I agree with Aaron, but I think leaving the names in there doesn't hurt anything, and it, it punctuates the point. Okay. Let's, let's move on. 1920. Um for group use of land use uh, approvals required. Feeding wildlife is not permitted. And, um, and fishing, I broke apart fishing from hunting and hunting hasn't changed a bit since we talked about it last. I, I I think my only comment about this hunting section is how to present it to the commission. Um, should we give them the trails map that we used? How much, I'm looking for some advice here on how much to say to the commission about what we did here to make this recommendation. I mean, we could have them ready to go, and then, but don't get into it unless somebody really asks for it. I like that approach. So when we do present it, Aaron, um, I'll I'll ask you to queue up certain things like the buffer map and uh, I'll have to decide what else. But there was a comment by by Bruce that he thought there were this was too detailed and too many too many links. And what I was going to do is I was going to make a scan of migratory bird 
regulations or some other regulations that just that's where that's where everything is and these are we call them policies but they amount to uh, regulations i think from the land use standpoint they would be enforced so there's and you wanted you wanted to put them in appendix and i i, I if whatever you think is the best thing for the public on this topic i that was just a reaction i had to it yeah i just soon to the commission and see what they say and okay that's fine I invested enough time in this as it is. Uh, okay. Um, and then Rachel says, would it be helpful to add some additional basic hunting rules here? Less for hunter, more for non-hunter use of conservation land, hunting permitted uh, X number of feet from houses, X number of feet from roads, so on. No hunting at night. Um, I'm open to that, but uh, I don't. Where do it? Where does it end? Right. I I I was ambivalent about the idea. I said, let Alex decide. My suggestion is do the same as the previous one. Put it in there, simple as possible. Let see what feedback we get. Okay. I'll mm -hmm. I'll. I'll I'll add Rachel's comments and um... <clears throat> I just I just think we need to be careful not to have the commission start debating the finer grain detail here. I mean they can they that's if that's their preference, fine, but anything we can do to enable them to just vote would be better. Okay. I I I, again, I, I'm not going to die on my arrow, if you will, but I, I still am troubled by the fact that we're leaving archery in there. I just, I don't understand if, if, um, we're, if we're... My if, response... You're good. I'm going to talk personally. I'm the one who brought this all up, and I hung my hat on public safety. Mm -hmm. And frankly, Dave, I didn't really want to be the one who took it all out. <laughs> okay. and so if somebody else wants to object to archery then i'm here i'm listening i'll abide but i didn't really want i mean there was some ambivalence from michelle and aaron about are we taking all the hunting places away and then as aaron said hunting is available on other town land and michelle said there's other private land that people can hunt on, so they sort of got satisfied. But mm -hmm. um, I didn't. I didn't want to be the bad guy. I will argue to take the archery out, and my logic is that my 35, 36 year old son, who does a lot of this kind of thing out in the world, it reports to me that increasingly bow hunters are not using stands; they're hunting in some way they perceive to be fairer by actually walking around. If that's the case, then it makes it more dangerous. I, I appreciate that, Bruce. I just think it's cleaner and easier to defend if it's kind of all or nothing here. I just- well, That's what I'm saying. That's a good reason to take archery out with, so it's nothing because yeah. archery potentially is becoming more dangerous based on the long discussion we had about distances and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. So let me, let me just get to the chase. Dave is going to have to go to Paul Bockelman and tell Paul that we're disallowing hunting on conservation land. And Paul's going to say, why? And Dave has to tell him. And Paul may have other questions and Dave has to answer them. So I want Dave to be comfortable with that discussion with Paul. I certainly will have to gear up to with that before that conversation because you you know you know may you may recall I I had I am not a big proponent of, of hunting at all. I want that to be out there, but I just I didn't think our banning of other types of hunting I didn't think our rationale was all that strong myself. Um so based on the trails and, and all of that, but um, 
you know, and, and if somebody asked me point blank, so how many incidents uh, of, of hunting related safety issues have you had? I, in 20 years, I, I'm going to have to rack my brain. I mean, we've had okay. fewer than fewer than 10 complaints about that in 20 years. So uh, in my time here, but again, I'm, I'm willing to go to bat for it. I, I, so, I thank you. Dave, tell them about our conversation when no. we were in Hop Brook, when the walker, the hiker came along dressed in orange. Mm -hmm. Tell them about his experience with being shot. Can you recount that more than better than I? I think you can, Alex. Well, I asked him, I told, we're standing on the bridge and these two guys come walking along. One guy's dressed in blaze orange jacket and hat. And I said, Dave, I'm going to talk to this guy. So when he was right there, I said, how you doing? Any reason you're dressed in blaze orange? And he says, because of the crazy hunters that are out there. And he proceeded to tell me that he had been peppered with shot. Um, number two shot. Somebody was deer hunting with a shotgun. And that... Um, the pellets hit his chest. They were weak enough that it didn't hurt him. I don't think he got any in the face. And I said, oh, you could have lost an eye. And he says, well, I wear glasses. But he said the hunter was on the other side of a pine stand. And so he explained to us, and Dave was there, that he got peppered. And so I said to Dave, well, there's an example of what we're talking about. Um. It could have been an eye, and we don't we don't want an accident. We don't want to wait for somebody to get hurt. So um, there was a real life example of somebody being safe. So that's there's a thing in here about people wearing blaze orange during hunting season. We didn't tell them how much to wear. We told them what Massachusetts requires of hunters. And they can decide decide for themselves. And I wrote it that way after talking with Mass Wildlife about this very thing. And they thought we should be comfortable recommending that people wear blaze orange rather than requiring them to wear blaze orange to walk on our trails. So that's why it's written that way. So anyways, uh, the public safety thing, I, I feel very comfortable, and I would be comfortable talking to Paul, that we borrowed the buffer that uh, Mass Wildlife has around occupied dwellings and put it on trails. It's not arbitrary. Yeah. We didn't make something up. We borrowed. And um, so I'm comfortable with that. As you yeah, know. I'm, I'm fine with it. We, we can defend it. And and we'll we'll do that. So I can I can just simply say here, no hunting is allowed, period. Mm -hmm. And I can write a comment. Um uh, what to do. Um yeah, if the commission oh um, I don't I don't want to think for them. Yeah. Let's just let it ride. I'm good. Can I ask a quick question about it before we mm -hmm. do? Um, what about hunt? What about um, beaver trapping? Like, if there's a public health or safety issue, would that be considered an outlier from an an all out ban? No, that's <clears throat> beavers. There'll be something written about beavers, and I haven't. Uh, I know you want something about when to do this and when to do that, but beaver be, beavers aren't hunted. It's in well, people. The, yeah, well, it's, yeah it's I guess in, hunting and trapping. I think of in the same. So, so it's in, it's in number twenty-five down at the, in the last paragraph. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we were covering it somewhere. No, I covered it, not but not here. Okay. So I hear you, Dave, and I'm uh, to be honest, I'm perfectly happy to say no hunting, but I've told you, huh, I've told you where I was because. Well, Dave has agreed. Let's let's. What do you want me to do? Look to let Dave go for it. He said he would do it. 
Mm -hmm. You want me to change this to say no hunting is allowed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it just say hunting is not allowed on conservation land, period. Correct. And you could put including archery just to make it really clear. I want to make sure that I, I've got this whole screen up here. I want to make sure that uh, track changes is in place. You want in, including uh, including archery hunting? You want me to say that? Yeah, please. <clears throat> including archery, I don't need to say hunting. So I I now get rid of all this. Uh, maybe save it somewhere. <laughs> So you don't have to get it again if you need it. Yeah, so... Um, the blaze orange, I think, would be a good thing to keep, though. Um, yeah. And it's in blade, the blaze orange stuff remains part of 23 or do you want to split it out i think it's fine to keep it as part of 23 I mean, yeah me too I... okay moving on i i bowed to what others want i okay 25 other than hunting and fishing as permitted by state one It's now other than fishing. Okay, so um, somebody thought this was so right here, Aaron. This is where trapping, trapping's right here. And then, it, but it says the commission may consider exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis, scientific research projects that are non-destructive, blah, blah, blah. These propositions do not apply to actions to resolve public health and safety threats created by beavers, such as flooding that are allowed under the law and that have been deemed warranted by the Board of Health in consultation with the commission, so on and so forth. Okay. So what you don't have and will have is um, uh, do's and don'ts of, of, of permitting. And it'll be, it'll, it'll come from probably the guidance. It has conditions in there about, you know, when it's too, there's conditions in there to consider, but it still says, that even these conditions you can override based on the public health and safety threat. Like, do we need to go through them now, Bruce? No, I just had two small things. If it's, if it's not in 24 or in B, 24B, if it's not already in, we might want to define refugia. And then I wondered in the second line of the paragraph at the end, should it be by beavers and or muskrats? 
Yes, but we have, do we have muskrats in town? Yes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, it is actually um, created by beavers and muskrats. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, refugia and refugium are both listed under definitions. Okay, thank you. Okay. Wood of any kind, that's number 25. No comments. Historical, that's 26. Use of metal detectors, number 27. Use of unmanned aircraft, number 28. And I have one, one small thing there. In deference to women who pilot, I think it should say unpiloted aircraft in both places. Thank you, Bruce. Hey. I actually personally had I sat there and said, why, what's wrong with this? Why not? Why can't somebody go out uh, like off 116 down by um, um, that big open field on the east side of the road? Why couldn't somebody, you know, what's wrong with flying a drone? But I didn't feel like pursuing it. I, what What is the problem with with uh, flying these things. Well, Bruce, you want to jump in? I'm happy to. No, go ahead. Go ahead, well, Bruce. I mean, quickly off the top of my head, one is is they can be very disruptive to wildlife. Uh, birds, birds, uh, migrating birds, landing in a field with uh, standing water, um, you know, refueling shorebirds. Uh, are are spooked and spooked into flight when they're when they're resting or feeding. Uh, they can disrupt animals that are are mating or you know scaring them out of their habitat. It's also a disruption, I think, for people enjoying the peace and quiet of a conservation area is simply to have this buzzing vehicle or buzzing aircraft over your head on a trail or in the middle of an open field and you're like, you're bird watching say, and all the birds flush and you're like, what the hell just happened? Oh, somebody has got a drone up and they flew into my space. So, but yeah, breeding birds are disrupted by them. A lot of, I don't know what U S fish does or, or uh, national parks, but I, I think a lot of them, a lot of, a lot of them prohibit them. So those are my quick answers. So, Amazing. We it's not even one o'clock yet, and we've gone through er, everything that we wanted to. I see that Bruce and Aaron still have their hands up. Yeah, too. I'm sorry, I wasn't. I was looking at the text. I don't know who went up first. Aaron. Aaron. Well, I was just gonna say. Um, I know the town has a drone, and that there have been instances where, for official purposes, um, they've been used for things. Um, and so I'm not sure, again, if we want a disclaimer, you know, for Town of Amherst staff may need to utilize or, you know, I don't know, Dave, I defer to you on that. But if there was ever an instance where. No, that's a good point. I mean, they have been used, for instance, in scientific research to look at forest canopy cover. Uh, they've also been used in rescues for people and for dogs very successfully. So we may want to put a little caveat in there that, you know, for instance, you could apply to the commission if you wanted to do, I don't know, uh, you know, a, 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 a forest cover canopy study of the Mount Holyoke Range uh, conservation areas in the town of Amherst. Could you apply to the commission and get permission to fly a drone on three Thursdays in October or whatever? Alex read my mind in what he typed. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> but I, I do have a, another, a different thing. Okay, go ahead, Bruce. So in Appendix F, Rachel asked the question whether this table, the procedure for alleviating beaver or muskrat-related conflicts was too complicated. And I disagree with her. I seem perfectly 
clear to me. Yeah. By the way, Rachel's been really helpful there. Um, I never, I couldn't get a, a, a copy of that to put in the document that wasn't fuzzy. But it, it seems fine, honestly. So, so what she did was she used her own, she has special programs that I don't. And she, she took that uh, flow chart and remade the flowchart. It's it it takes up three pages, but it's it's more the boxes and arrows are much more clear. Okay. You haven't seen it, but um, it's caused her to read the guidance in order to make the boxes and arrows. And so I leave it to the two of you. I it seemed fine to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And she also, there was the, the letter from the state, by the way, uh, transmitting the guidance to the boards of health. I had a hell of a time converting that PDF file to a Word file. The heading on the letter was on its own page, and then the letter started on the next page, and she fixed that. So she's been quietly being extremely helpful on the side. Um, She's just terrific. Um, um, and you notice that I did put the organic legislation for the commission right up front in that appendix, which I, I found very interesting to read. The, the conservation organizations have much more uh, opportunity, like raising money and grants and all kinds of things. Uh, we don't do that, but it's it's possible it's in the law okay i'm delighted so can we agree that um i will i'll keep this copy with all the notes and then uh, accept all changes and send it to aaron to provide to the commission at its next meeting bruce yes agreed you got your hand up and then aaron um it was Lowered from previous. Aaron? Um, just relative to that flow chart, I'm just wondering why con I mean what what is the purpose of the flow chart relative to these to this policy? To flow to show the uh decision making process. Okay. I'm just wondering because it's it's like a it's a regulatory um side of things and I don't feel particularly comfortable um, interpolating state regulations into something like that for inclusion in a policy document. Um, I just wanted to state that for the record. I just feel like we, we staff knows what the regulations are and are working to comply with them. So I'm just not sure like any, any it's similar to like other discussions we've had you know, if it's a regulatory issue, we're going through the regulatory process. So I'm just not sure how it's applicable to the policy or or relevant to the policy to include that. So read the title, which is on the screen right now. Yeah. This is a regulation. Right, but that's state regulation, which is not, I mean, it's that... Yeah. That flow chart is pointing to state regulation, which this is a uh, town regulation. So I'm just, I guess I'm just confused as to its relevance in this document. When well, it's... we're going to have a broader conversation about beavers and the, the timing is not right right now, but um, let's put that discussion off. Um, okay. Um, I, as you know, I have an information request out and uh, on how how we are complying, and we'll have a discussion about that some other time. Well, so I mean, just to that, Alex, like it's not specific to conservation land. That inquiry is like a town wide. Any it could be on private property. It could be on other town property. So I'm just again, um, I feel a little like it's 
it's off topic for this, but I'm, I guess I'm just confused about the relevancy of those requests to our charge as a committee here, um, how that's all applicable. Yeah, I appreciate your concern. Folks, I apologize because I was called into a meeting with the town manager in like four minutes. So I, I apologize. I have to run. I think we're uh, done. Okay. If we can agree, what we haven't talked about is what's on the agenda next. And um, um, we can have a we can have a conversation. But um, Dave, if you have to go, it's it's probably a short conversation because we have now gone through everything except the redraft to the forestry management uh, which i haven't gotten to yet and the beaver discussion and which is coming and um and then finalizing community gardens and what, what, what other than that we've gone through all the policies so i think we're in good shape for concluding by the end of december particularly if this goes to the commission at its next meeting. Okay. Today was a big leap. Well, I'm gonna let, I am going to run, but I'm going to let you all finish, you know, what you think is for the next agenda. Okay. Aaron, is there any member of the public on? No. Okay. Um, basically, it's just coming back to having the guidelines to Board of Health, it does name the Conservation Commission. It actually doesn't name the Department of Conservation in the, in the law or the guidance. And um, there needs to be a discussion about how we are administering that law on conservation land, as well as the town of Amherst for that matter. So for now, the decision-making process, um, I think, People need to know, the Conservation Commission needs to know that if somebody files an application and it's denied, he has an appeal right, and to whom, and that if there's flooding of, of town wells, who handles that? Um, um, I, think it, I think it's very, I think it's handy for the Commission to know how it fits in the, in in the whole uh, beaver management situation. Yeah, and I don't disagree. Like you found that beaver management page on our website. I don't disagree that if we want to include, you know, guidance to people on a page like that, I'm just not sure it belongs in this policy document, I guess is where I'm, Okay, you know. well, let's, I appreciate your comment as staff, as a commissioner, I'd like to leave it there for now and see where we come out on the end. I I agree with Alex. Let's let's set it aside for now. When a beaver situation comes up in the future, just a heads up, Aaron, I'm going to ask to see the application. And I, I also, oh, something else totally different. We, we on the last Conservation Commission meeting, we had an application for banding birds. And since then, I thought, well, we don't have anything in the policy about birds, banding birds. So I have an appointment tomorrow, Wednesday, in the afternoon with Randy Dittmers at the Fish and Wildlife Service, who runs the banding, summer banding, on Silvio Conti land. Um, and he's also worked for migratory birds at the Fish and Wildlife Service. So I've asked Randy um, if he would spend an hour with me just coming up with some policy rules that um, we might consider adopting for banders. And he has sent me his banding permit. And um, and I also queried the web. I just said, what are the standard bird banding conditions for Massachusetts? And bingo, up they came. And then I asked, what are the standard bird banding uh, conditions for federal permit? And bingo, up they came. 
and it's amazing how good the computer is. Well, it sounds like you're going to need to meld those things together. I, I need to I need to take this opportunity um, that we have gotten done early, if I can. Yep, me too. Okay. Uh, I just want to finish up on bird banding. I'm not going to repeat what's what are the standard conditions that we like Aaron's um, boiler plates. They're going right. to anyway. Okay. But things like um, netting birds during the nesting season, how long you can hold them, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'll try and get that done pretty quick. So I I know you don't want to talk about beavers um, right now. I just want to, if as you're considering this, bringing this discussion up, I just want to um, point out and you know, potentially provide more information if necessary about the emergency certification process. Because if a request for an emergency certification comes to me for something like beavers or otherwise, it could be anything, we're supposed to respond within 24 hours. So, and as of right now, I'm essentially authorized to sign those emergency certifications. So if there's some other procedure that's going to be happening in terms of those requests being filtered through members of the CONCOM, we just have to make sure that there's a regulatory um, process that's being integrated to make sure that we're not holding these up from a legal standpoint because they can appeal to DEP if we don't respond. Um, okay, and... so the, the, the emergency certs that you issue are um, wetland emergency certs and the two conditions, the B and C conditions for which you get involved in affect well, are you're involved, you, the, con, con, by the way, the Department of Conservation is not even named in the law. So you sign and Dave signs, I'm not sure that your signature is legal. I'm not no, sure. No, Alex, they, as the staff, I have been duly authorized to sign off as an agent of the board. Can can the can this get worked out later? Uh, well, I, I'm lawyer? just yeah, I'm just making sure that we, if we're going to talk about it holistically, we should talk about it holistically. But just taking into to account the statutory obligations of the commission and the town when these requests come in that it's not like we can spend five days passing it through to get everybody's or, you know, hold a special meeting or something like that, because that would require 48 hours advance notice. The guidance, so the guidance to the board says that emergency doesn't mean that there is, that the house is on fire. Emergency is interpreted to mean that the permit should be issued quickly and short term, 10 days. You're, you've been issuing 30 days routinely and um, I, I, you know, I have an information request in. So what I want to do is just lay on the paper, lay on the desk, all the papers I get, and see what the process, in fact, is. But the right, and I think we're also getting cross the conservation permit versus the board of health permit. So the board of health permit is a ten-day permit. The concom permit is a thirty-day permit. So if I issue an emergency cert, it's valid for thirty days. If Board of Health issues a 10-day trapping permit, it's valid for 10. So there's there are distinctions there. Yeah, I'm I'm looking through the law to try and clarify whether the Board of Health is the only one to issue a permit in in with regard to option B and C. It says that the Conservation Commission, notice that it doesn't say the Department of Conservation must um, approve and condition. What's not clear is whether or not that approval and condition goes back to the Board of Health for issuing of the permit. And so I wanna, I wanna say a system is in place that works. There's no doubt about that. Beavers are being taken care of, businesses being conducted. It all happens. The Conservation Commission is always asked to approve in the rears. And and yet the Conservation Commission is named in the law. Why is the Conservation Commission always asked to to approve in the rear when it is the one that is uh, named in the law? 
Well, so when an emergency cert comes in, we have to respond. We can't always schedule a conservation commission meeting. So, so the way that it's always been handled with DEP is there is an authorized agent of the board or the chair could sign off an emergency cert. And then once that's emergency, issued, it's ratified by the board. Emergency doesn't mean the house is on fire. For example, Eastman Brook has been there for a long time. And that's not an emergency. But an emergency cert is issued because that's what's that's what's called for. But it doesn't mean that there is an emergency like bring the ambulance. It 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 the law is very careful to define what emergency is. Well, I think if the commission has a question, and it's Alex's question, but that that we should find a way to get uh, an opinion from the town lawyer as to what is acceptable and make it clear. Well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on the phone with the AG's office about this. And I Yeah, I mean I Alex, I I I want I want us to abide by the law. I just want to make sure that we have an established process that conforms to the law based on my knowledge of it. So, you can call the president's office if it makes you feel better. And I encourage you to do whatever due diligence you think is necessary. I just, I don't, I'll, I'll leave it there. If, if I just want to make sure that if something comes to me, I know what process I'm following and I know it complies with the law and I'm giving so, people a fair response in fair time. Ne never mind compliance with the law, Erin, you're doing a great job. Continue what you do. We will, we'll, the system works. And then if it gets changed, it gets changed in a formal way. That's yeah. The system works. It, things are getting done in a timely way. There's no criticism there whatsoever. You shouldn't feel personally, you're not being personally attacked. But Paul Bachman doesn't know how the system works. Neither does Dave. Well, like, my suggestion is to Look in you. You described four different things that me that you were intending to look into in order to achieve clarity. So let's. My suggestion is to table this until you have a time to do that. Yeah. Thanks. I lost my screen. Are you there? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Oh, now I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, be at ease, Aaron. Continue doing exactly what you're doing. But I've told you some of the some of my thoughts and the fact that the the fact that the board of health does not have an application on its website to help a citizen know what to do the fact that it doesn't have a decision making chart to help a citizen know what to do the fact that mr hurley or whatever his name is wrote directly to, to paul bockelman instead of the director of health um people don't know what to do well, we can fix that but we need your information. Yeah, so I'll write up. Okay. I have talked with Dave about this. I really do need to, I, I was trying to escape earlier. Okay. Let, let's. Do we yeah. have a motion to end? Yes, I, I move that we adjourn. I, I'm an I. Okay, let's. let's. We're gonna close this meeting at 119. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Bye. Uh, Thank you. Aaron, bye -bye. Aaron, if you just stay on for a minute, don't get all worked up. Everything's fine. You're doing a great job. 